It's been a while, but we're back with Tudor Pro Cycling. We've now arrived in March 2024, Paris behind us. I can't remember a single thing from it, so it can't have been a great race. Today's much more simple. One day races everywhere in Italy, in France, in Belgium, and so forth. With the Cobble Classics, or at least the most important ones for us. We won't ride the Ronde van Vlaanderen and so forth, but we will ride the Langs of Edri and Gent Wevelgem. So I'm looking forward to that. That being said, starting off in Italy with Milano Torino, we've got twice the Superga climb towards the end, and Tade Pogacar right here. So this won't be easy. Yannis Fazar is 75 mountains, so we likely won't win this race, but let's try and hunt for a top five maybe. Starting off with a minus one, not the best start to the episode, but we'll try and manage. The first super guy is coming up, so we gotta watch out now with our positioning. We gotta make sure we stick in the front group here. Here we go, Vazar on top. Let's try and get some teammates towards him now. The final climb has begun. UAE pacing with Carboni at the front. Vazar sitting very nicely right now in a good position. Gotta make sure I stay towards the front though. 2.5 kilometers, some moves at the front. We've got Lopez for Astana really going now. Fazar, it's almost your turn, man. It's almost your turn. Time to reach for the top. Time to reach for the top. Let's go 90, Fazar. Not too fast. Not too fast. We are with the likes of Kelderman. Can we get a top 5? That will be very difficult. I think we're going to be fighting for a top 10 here. It's to the left that we go now. So it's not done yet, the uphill. And I'm going to wait a bit longer, and I'm going to wait a bit longer. I'm going to launch right now with Fazar. The winner is going to be Miguel Angel Lopez. <laughs> in real life, fired from his team, but in-game, he's still on fire. We've got Adria, Tiberi, and so forth. But we are going to be fighting, I think, for a 9 for so spot. Actually, he finished 10th. I guess I'm fine with that. Next up, GP Dene. In real life, it has some cobble sections. This profile doesn't seem to have it, but Kasper Andersen is our sprint if it is. Against the likes of Binyam Laporte and so forth. I think a top 3 should be viable here. 3.5 kilometers to go. Our train is fully on the rails right now. We've got Kellerman next to go on 99. There we go. Hecht is done for Paja's lead out. And is a bit late, to be honest, so... Might not be working in time, but Posh can do the lead out as we speak. Kasper Andersen perfectly in the wheel can launch right now with 1k to go. Andersen versus Girmay, Andersen versus Binyam. Na na na, top three as we expected before the race, but I would have hoped we beat the likes of Clément Venturini, to be honest. Pretty close, I guess, but no cigar. The favorite wins, that is Binyam. But Kasper Andersen gets another opportunity in Bredenekoek said This one has an echelon section, though, so we have to watch out. A long one as well, but we are third favorite with significantly higher acceleration and sprint than the other. So, on paper, we are the favorite in my eyes. With about 75 kilometers to go, we are in the echelon section. My plan is to just keep it simple. We are the favorite sprinter, so let us try and focus on that. Let's try and win the sprint. We are now in the last 10 kilometers. Four riders ready for our team. Anderson looking pretty great at the back of the train. 3.5 kilometers to go now. Our train is looking good. Our train is looking good. Oh, I have to pause it. Didn't have this guy ready. Bosch can now go 99 out of the wheel of Hecht. Hecht, get out of the way, my friend. Get out of the way. Oh, Vogel will have to sprint too early. Vogel might have to sprint too early. Let's hope it's not the case. Before this corner, there we go. Anderson is ready. Anderson is ready right now. There we go. Anderson and Vogel. Anderson and Vogel versus Jens Reinders. Budding. Anderson, Anderson, Anderson. Yes, yes, yes. That other rider right there is not a rider we are fighting against. He's being lapped. So, yeah. Victory. Nice to see ourselves on the podium already so early on in the episode. Let's hope we can repeat that a few times more. On to another Sprinters Classic then. Per sempre Alfredo. We've got the likes of Vogel here now. Not Kasper Andersen. So a bit harder. But then again, the competition seems to be a tiny bit easier. Five kilometers to go. A four-man train on the rails. Although Vogel is not in the wheel of Fadevo. So that is not exactly how he wanted. So... Not sure how I will fix that. I might try and go a bit longer with Paj just to make sure that I can worst case scenario sprint with Fadevo. Let's do 95. Where is Vogel? Where is Vogel? He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Let's sprint with Paj. Fadevo can launch as well already. We've got this corner as well that might make it easier. Vogel is spending a lot of energy. Let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. Let's launch right now. Vogel versus Tesson. Tesson, Alex Vogel. Vogel might actually win. Oh my god, Vogel, Vogel, come on. No, 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 no. Yes! He did it! He beat Balashek! There he is, his third victory for the team. Two victories in 2023, another one in 2024. Twelve de stage, Alp Cizer stage, and now he's got Per Sempre Alfredo. The next race is a World Tour race. Minerva Classic, Brugge de Pano, Wout Aert as favorite for this race. 
It's a sprinting classic. That is why we have Kasper Andersen at the start. And most importantly, it is a sponsor objective. We need a top five. Oh, we got a big move. We've got Wout van Aert going up here with the Bond and also Hergots and Vermeersch. And there he goes again. He drops his fellow breakaway riders. He's now solo with 30 seconds on the peloton, Wout van Aert. Let's see if we can catch him. 3.5 kilometers. He still has a gap of 30 seconds. Come on, Van Aertveld. Leonard, it's your turn now. Gustav Wang going 99, 99. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're getting outplayed. We're getting outplayed by Wout van Aert. Hugo Pash, sprint right now, sprint right now. Anderson as well, Anderson as well. Nah, 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 nah. Wout van Aert is going to win in Zottegem by a solo ride. I can't believe it. I can't believe we lost it like that. Anderson might not even win the sprint in the group. Teutenberg beats him. So yeah, not a great stage for us. Oh my god, I just realized we needed a top five for the sponsor objective. We got six because of Teutenberg. No, come on. Ah, oh, that's so close. Sixth, that's disappointing. Ah, oh, an orange star. We fell our objective as expected. We needed a top five. We got a top 10. Anyway, now an actual Cobble Classic, a big one as well. E3 Saxo Bank Classic, 82 Cobble Van der Poel, 82 Cobble Van Aard, both present. Meanwhile, our team is simple. We've got all the riders that can cobble in our squad, but Gage hacked our leader with 76 cobble here. E, not a great start. Gage hacked with a minus two. That's our only man that really can do something in the final of this race now 75 cobble only. The race is halfway and the climbs that matter are here. We are starting now with the Knokteberg and after that the Hotonberg and plenty of climbs that follow after. So positioning is key with our train. We gotta keep ourselves to the front and make sure we don't get caught in a split. With about 46 kilometers to go we are in a group of 47 people with four riders. Anderson still here, the heck looking good, but Paj being our MVP right now when it comes to energy, it has not been the hardest E3 when it comes to the parkour and very much not as selective as in real life, but we still have the likes of the Outer Quartermont coming up and also the Paterberg, so this duo will probably scorch the peloton. Here we go, on to the Paterberg, we've got two minutes towards the breakaway, 14 guys up front and some good ones in there like Mike Tunison, but we are actually holding out quite well in the peloton, so I'm hoping that we see some movement here to try and close down the breakaway. Now the Auto Quartamont, and now it's gonna get difficult. Now it's gonna get very difficult to follow the big guns. We've got Pistol Bedegger at the front, not exactly the biggest gun. Heck, come on, move through, my friend, move through. Try and get Posh to the front, try and follow with Posh, there we go. Ah, oh, it's gonna be tough to hold on, it's gonna be tough to hold on. Come on, Posh, come on, Posh, come on, Posh. He's actually holding on to Vanderpool, so... I would consider that a win on the Outer Quartermont. Okay, 25 kilometers to go, 31 people in this group. We are the front of the race. Hugo Pash has no yellow energy and a cobble section arrives, the Varenstraat. Can I follow the group on this? It might be tough to be honest, let's go 95. Come on, come on, come on. Tiny bit longer, Pash, tiny bit longer. No, 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 I'll drop. Pash will drop. The race is over for us. This is the end. Ah, damn it. In the end, it was a group sprint. Looks like it's going to be Asgreen or will it be Steven? This is going to be a close one. One thing is certain, Vanderpool is third. Looks like the photo finish says Jasper Steven. We finish on a 31st spot with Hugo Page. So not amazing, but I also did not have top 10 expectations here. Time for another classic. Hint Wevel came with Arnold Lee as the favorite. But I don't think the competition is ready for Kasper Andersen. The fun thing about Hint Wevelgem is that every sprinter needs to get over these hills first. So... That's what comes next. We've got our riders at the front. Positioning will be key. We are turning onto the Camelberg as we speak. The first spot is asphalt, then it turns into cobbles closer to the top. Here we go. Towards the cobbles right now. Hecht is holding out quite well at the front with the entire team in his wheel. So positioning is perfect. That was pretty easy for the team. So let's just sit on 65 maintain position now and wait for the next Camelberg. Once again, turning onto the Camelberg, but I think from the other side, we're gonna go ham on this one though on 1995. Because I want to split the peloton here. Come on, turn to the left onto the steep section. Gage Heck can hammer it right now. Hammer it right now. On top right here, 99, 99 looks like. Gujar is doing better than us, to be honest. But we're going to get across the top in a front group, hopefully. And hopefully Kasper Andersen is with us. He is. Vogt is not, so our train did not really do it perfectly. Van Aert's behind, though, so that's beneficial. Let's keep going. Looks like the rest is being brought back. That's going to be a group of 70. So, yes, we're going to go down to a sprint. We are seeing attacks left and right by Sheffield O'Brien, the likes of Fontreich, but let's be honest about it. We have a seven-man train, so... 
nobody's getting away. 5.5 kilometers to go, five riders still left. Looks like Kellerman's about to be done. It's now to Gustav Wang. We've got Fredheim as the first proper sprint lead out. Baj in the wheel and then Anderson. Let's get Kellerman out of the way so he doesn't block Anderson there. There we go, perfect. Last three kilometers, we've got too many riders here. Fredheim can sprint fairly soon right now. We've got Baj in the wheel. I'm going too early, I've gone too early. I've gone too early. I've gone too early. I've gone too early. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What is happening? Oh my god. Are we gonna are we gonna want to? We're gonna want to. Hugo Page. Is Hugo Page winning? Hugo Page won against Wevelgem. What happened there? The group didn't do anything. Like there was a gap open. Oh, I need to see a replay. I need to see a replay. So everything's fine with three kilometers to go. Anderson is in a perfect wheel. Bonifazio in the wheel of that. It looks like Bonifazio just starts following Wang instead of Anderson. And we're off. What a weird way to win against Wevelgem, but we bloody well did it. I gotta be honest, I hate the bug that we can't see the podium after watching a replay. But anyway, I'll get over it. Hugo Page is the winner of Gent Wevelgem. Let's be honest about it, because of a bug in the sprint, but I'll take it. I'll take a World Tour victory like that with Tudor Pro Cycling. Kasper Peterson, our destined rider focusing on this race, only second behind his bloody teammate. I bet if we take a look at the sponsor and go towards the noteworthy results that Gent Wevelgem, yes, indeed, is on three star importance. By the way, what is the inconsistency? Three pluses, and then when we go towards objectives, they've got stars for importance. Just make it stars everywhere. Looks a lot more beautiful. Next up is Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen. Looks like it's not the hardest parkour, though. Not the most recent version, but Van Aert is still favored. That being said, we're going to try and be competitive with the likes of Andersen, Hegd, and Paj. We are past halfway the race. The Cobblebergs are happening now, so it's all about survival. Get every rider over each climb. We are now on the whole ton, the second last climb of the day, and to be honest, it's not looking that bright when it comes to our team. If a favorite attacks we can't follow so it's all about getting Kasper Andersen over these climbs and hoping he can sprint if it comes down to a sprint. Now the Knock to Berg, the last climb of the day and so far we are still holding on. It looks like the likes of the Clerk is done for but Vanard has not made a move which is very advantageous for us because Andersen is now over every climb. Damn it, I always forget the Varenstraat exists and it's exactly where people seem to be going hard and Narvaez is going Paulit, Van Aert and so forth. I can't chase that myself, I have to hope the others do. It might have snapped for good now, it might have snapped for good because the group that I'm in with Andersen is probably not gonna close down these nine riders at the front. These ones are gonna be fighting for the victory in 2.9 kilometers. Andersen cannot compete, unfortunately. And it looks like it's going to be Jasper Steven winning again. Jesus Christ, the man's winning everything. E3, Dwarsdorf Vlaanderen, what else? Looks like we finished 28th and 31st, so not much better than E3, unfortunately. But I guess we can't complain after winning in Dwevelgem. <laughs> now it's Hildeprez time. Not exactly the biggest cobble race, is a sprint classic, but the favorites are the cobble riders, Van der Poel, Van Aert, Pedersen. Obviously, our man is Andersen. Looks like Van Aert, Van der Poel and Pedersen are attacking. Kind of shocking knowing this ends in a sprint most likely, but hey, let them do it. Final three kilometers, our four riders are still up here. Paj doing a perfect lead out. Sean Flynn can launch right now at 2.4. We've got Vogel in the wheel for the proper lead out for Anderson. Van der Poel in our wheel. Let's launch with Vogel right now. Anderson, wait, 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 wait. Right now. Let's get past Van der Poel. Let's try and get past Van der Poel. Anderson beats Van der Poel and wins the Schelde Preis. That is exactly the result we wanted. And it looks like Vogel is also third. The wins are coming left and right. We won Gent Wevelgem, Schelde Preis, and some other races this episode that I completely forgot about already. Oh yeah, Breden Kok said it. That makes three victories already for this man. With nine one-day races behind us, let us finish off today's episode with the Tour of the Alps. Important to note is that we need to win a stage at this race for our sponsor. So the race is five days combining medium mountains with proper pure mountains. Starting off with an uphill finish, a bit more of a hilly sprinter vibe on day two, a mountain top finish on day three, then a brutal stage with a flat ending, and the same thing on the final day after the Vasson Monte Bondone. Pretty sure one of the sides of the Monte Bondone will be in the Giro d'Italia 2023. Anyway, our team's pretty straightforward. Alex Bonin as our puncher, and Vazar as our pure climber. We are closing in towards the final climb. It looks to be 
about four kilometers in length. Fazar is looking great with a plus two, but I forgot to look at the competition. So I guess we're about to find out on the climb who we're fighting against. 3.5 kilometers to go. The final climb is here. Vazar in a perfect position, but moves are happening. Caruso on the left, for example. We got to try and follow here. 1.5 kilometers now. And it's a bit late when it comes to Vazar. 89 now. I feel like we're still doing great here. I feel like we're still doing great. 800 meters. Let us launch it right now with Vazar. But then the wheel, but then the wheel, but then the wheel. Let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. But then can launch as well. It's going to be a top three, I think. But the victory is going to be for Damiano Caruso on the BMC team. Looks like Fazar is going to be finishing on the third spot here. This means that Caruso is the first leader of this race, but we are on six seconds right now in GC. So that's a good start to the race. Turns out Cole Brelli is the favorite on day two. So more for the hilly sprinters indeed. 15 kilometers left. We made it comfortably over that fast cat climb. We're now moving towards the false flat uphill to the line and our entire train except for one is still here so let's keep going and we've got attacks we have zambanini adam yates and so forth making moves woods as well so we gotta get ready with our squad we gotta follow 2k to go the sprint is about to go down but Baudin's energy is not that high pillow can go fazar in the wheel so he's also ready to sprint let's go let's go let's go let's go let's launch right now but then wait a bit longer wait a bit longer but that can go right now no 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 it's gonna be called Brelli that takes it. The favorite takes it. Bonus seconds for Fazar, maybe? I think just not. Damn it. Fourth. That's sad. With our fourth position, we remain in the third spot in GC on six seconds of Damiano Caruso. Now on to day three, which looks like more of a pure mountain stage for the GC riders. We are halfway to race and we're about to start the first cat climb here. This big one, the Alpe Rodengo Zumis. After that, it's basically a bit of a valley before we start the final climb. So we just got to get over this damn climb first. Well, this is not exactly super easy right now. Vazar's in trouble, Baudin's in trouble, Pelot's in trouble. It's going to be a shock if I can get to the top in one piece. We're about to reach the top and Pelot is about to drop. So let's hope he can hold on. Let's hope he can hold on. Nah, 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 nah. Or does he? I think he's still on. I think he's still on. Let's get to Vazar, help him out. But... It's still a bit uphill now, so this is where Pillow will likely drop again. Unless the tempo drops, which it is doing, so that's good. There we go, Pillow survived. We have a domestique for the final climb. All the rest is basically done for in our team, but at least we have someone. Looks like the tempo in the group is completely gone, so we might see the likes. Oh, that was a crash. That was a crash right there. I saw you crash. Madan, Diaz, and so forth on the floor right here. Oh, wait, that's Damiano Caruso. That is Damiano Caruso. On to the final climb right now with Ineos spacing because Damiano Caruso is still behind, which means that the prime candidate for the GC lead right now is Yates. Bernal attacks. Tran and Quinn are also trying to follow. I didn't expect them to go with Bernal, knowing that Yates is technically in the GC leadership position right now. Voisar, keep on going, my friend. 85 for now if you have to, but it's still a 7.5 kilometer climb. Meanwhile, Caruso is still 1 minute 40 behind, so he's unlikely to really come back to the front of the race. Bernal is very likely going to win the race in the last kilometer, but we are actually fighting for a top 10 position here. Let's go 90 right now in this group. Let's see if we can get that top 10 position. Fazar can launch a bit later, a bit later, a bit later. Let's wait, let's wait, let's wait until that corner comes. Fazar can go right now. And I'm going to try and get as close as possible towards Woods right there. I think I'll get a bit closer, but not completely to his wheel. Actually, we're flying past Woods just on the line. There we go. Seventh in the stage for Vazar. We are now seventh in GC as well on 118. Looks like Damiano Caruso is completely out of the top 10. So that crash really did him dirty. Once again, a brutal mountain stage. My goal is simple. Try and survive in GC and perhaps send someone in the breakaway because we need to get a stage win in this race. Here we go. Today is breakaway time for Simon. Pelot, the break is actually getting away. 10 riders in total. The peloton is letting them go, so that's perfect. With the gap being two minutes between the peloton and the break, well, I'll try and bridge up with Maxence Prigent right here on the first big climb. There we go. We've got Williams not reacting to me, so that is a good thing. So he is riding away from the peloton, 1 minute 13 seconds, but he's not getting much closer to the front of the race. So actually the tempo is stalking a bit now. So maybe this is his moment. Let's up that towards 85 for a bit and let's hope we can get closer. Oh, we've got to move up here. So let's up it a tiny bit with Pelot. We got to make sure this brake keeps rolling and we are catching up with Prigent as we speak. Hopefully he can recover here a bit. Somehow Prigent held on. We're now with two riders in the breakaway three minutes on the peloton but this climb is to come with 40k to go for Cella di Brez and it's quite steep that one damn it I missed the move by four riders in the breakaway we're now on 45 seconds of the front of the race Prigent's doing the work to try and close it down 
Pelo will remain in the group doing nothing for now. The big climb's about to start. We are ready. Here we go. Pelo bridges up towards the front of the group. Let's keep going for now. 40 seconds behind is the peloton with Ghana pacing again. Fazar, keep it up, my friend. Keep yourself in this damn group. Three kilometers left to climb. Pelo, the only rider ahead right now. Fazar is still in the group, so we're looking good. Pelo can also be a satellite rider if necessary. If this breakaway completely fails, which it likely will. Here we go. Fazar now has a friend in the group. 43 people here, so it's likely gonna be a bit of a a bunch print here. An attack on the right, Zvircek is going, we've got the likes of Tran trying to close, Caruso closing, let's go 99 with Pelo right now, 99 with Pelo, let's get our guy to the front, Pelo can sprint right now, Vazar is ready as well, Vazar can launch, we're in such a terrible position, na 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 na, Colbrelli, 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 Colbrelli ahead of Ballerini, and the third spot is going to be for Sean Quinn right here. Like we had a great adventure in the breakaway, we had fun with Vazar trying to make stuff happen, but in the end, no change still seventh once again big mountain stage with a flat finish that's it all allow we are starting with a wonderful day plus three on Vazar 79 mountain today we've got below it plus two and so forth let's hope the Bondoni is selective because with that stat we can do something 8k towards the top the break is closed but so for a non-selective climb 70 people in this damn group it's like a gigantic group in Vazar no issue at all so I think I will make an attack at the top. Here we go, the Tudor Mountain Train has arrived. Alex Bodan doing God's work right now, six kilometers to climb. Let's add some tempo, let's drop some people. Yeah, no point in attacking, is there? I'll just keep on rolling over the top and I'll make my way towards this hill right here and do something there, hopefully. 10 kilometers to go, the climb is about to start. Let's get ready, we're in a great position. Here we go, Prijan doing the work. Pillow in the wheel, Vazar is in third wheel. I'll try and attack over the top. There he goes, Pillow with the final punch. I will get ready. I will get ready. Let's do 99 right here. 99, 99. And there goes the attack by Vazar over the top. That's my goal here. We are going with the likes of Albanese. Let's see if we can work together here on 85 right now. Come on, Albanese. Work with me. Yates is not closing it. Yates is not closing it. The thing is, if I fight with Albanese, I'm going to lose the sprint. That's what sucks. But I guess we're, we're trying to find the best into evils here. Come on, Vazar, keep on going, keep on going. Albanese, help me out, my friend. Help me out, Albanese. Come on, man, come on, man. Dude, help me out, dude, help me out. Come on, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? I gotta recover some energy, gotta recover some energy, gotta recover some energy. I'm gonna try and follow his wheel. He's sprinting early, he's sprinting early. Let me try and follow his wheel, try and follow his wheel. Let's launch right now, last few meters, last few meters. Nah, 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 nah. Vazar gonna get second. I gave Albanese the victory. That is unfortunate, but hey. We couldn't out sprint him, eh? He's a better sprinter. That was so close, and I would have been so happy with that victory for a sponsor, but no, we don't get it, unfortunately. GC wise, we do move up into fourth position, and if I kept pacing, if I just kept pacing with Alban AC, we would have been on the top three of GC, but I didn't. Ah. Grave mistakes here today. Anyway, that was a really fun ending to the stage and that's what matters most. Yeah, only failed objectives today. We didn't do our top five in the Brugge de Pony Classic and we also don't get our stage win at Tour of the Alps, but I do feel like a top three in a stage should deserve an orange star on this and not a red cross. Anyway, that's about it for today's episode. We did plenty of racing, lots of one-day races, Tour of the Owls, but next time we're going to start off with the Tour de Romandie and again, one-day races alongside that. Finally, up to now, we've donated 10 euros for every single victory in the series. In total, 50 victories, so 500 euros. That donation has been made. Now, I might disappoint a few of you, but I will pause this for a bit for the simple reason that I want to organize a bigger charity event in 2023 which i'll give you an update on throughout the year somewhere anyway thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed today's episode and i'll be back very soon for the next episode goodbye